Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. God is awesome. He's on the throne having fun. Did you realize in Psalms, I believe it is, it says, is it a Proverbs? You can't think today. That's why I have to follow with the Holy Ghost because if without him I'm in trouble, as you will see once in a while. But the reality is this, is when you start to do one thing, that is, the world comes against God. He's trying to tear, they're trying to tear down his kingdom. And what does God do? He sits on his throne and laughs. Whew, have you ever seen or thought about Jesus, sit, or I mean God sitting on the throne and laughing at these people? Because <laughs> they can't do anything. They're trying, they're causing problems, but they can't do anything. Sometimes we have to get that attitude. Just kind of laugh at things. That's what, was it Chuck, or uh, the one about the finances? Caps, Charles Caps. He took and he prayed over his houses that hadn't sold and he needed money. And he didn't go back and pray over them. He went back and laughed at them. <laughs> it's done. It's over. <laughs> you have no authority. I do. I just put the authority on you. It's going to change. Think about it. When you start to do that, you get to a point where you're in a different place and you start to have victory in different things. It's awesome when God starts to show us revelation knowledge. Just as today, we have a great opportunity to change the outlook of Des Moines. And you might say, how? This afternoon will be in a great time to come together and break down the walls of the body of Christ. That is racial divide. That's what Brother Macklin had said. He says, we're broken, we're divided. We need to be set free. We need to be brought forth. And he, he's the one that, sought, that set this up. He asked me to come. I didn't ask. I didn't even talk to him about it. It's all from him. I took and, and uh, went to his church this week, sat there, and uh, we're kind of looking to see, you know, what we needed to be there and to do this and, he left. <laughs> what was he leaving for? He says, I want you to pray what you need to pray to prepare for today. I says, what? That's a, a man of honor. He just left. He says, it's yours. Pray over it. Prepare it. Get it ready for today. He, he was in the back praying. He could hear him once in a while. And I was sitting there in the front looking all the way. This is strange. I've never had this happen before. So, you, you know, don't know what God's going to do today. He was praying, so I was praying to prepare for today. And for those who don't know where it's at, if you know where Mercy, Mercy Hospital is, right there on University, and it's right, it's just right by 6th Street. If you take strict 6th Street on University and start to go west, like coming out this way, you go 6th, 9th, and then 13th, and it has a stoplight there. And then when you take a left and go south towards town, towards Des Moines, it's just a short block, and then about halfway in the middle of the block on the right, you'll see the church there. I don't know because the grass is pretty wet. If there's a grassy spot, we could park up there. We'll have to see when we get there if cars are parking there. If not, we'll have to park on the street, and there's not a whole lot of street there. So if you go just north a little bit, there's a building that's it's, – uh, I don't know, I think it's a government building there that they use in uh, United Way, okay, that you might be able to park right in that parking lot, and it's just about a half a block down to the church. So, yes? I just want to say it's a big white church, and he does have a sign that says Jesus. Resurrection. Something like that. Restoration. Yeah, restoration, but it's in the yard yes, after the church. Yeah. So that's where it is. If you go too far, you also get stopped because it's a dead-end street. So it's not, you can't go very far down the road. But it's on the right-hand side. It's just a little short block and then halfway on the right, or the next block on the right side is where his church is at. And if you can make it, we love it. If you don't have any food for the uh, uh, pot blessing, then just come anyway. He says there'll be plenty of food. Oh, yeah. We'll have a treat this afternoon later. 
So we'll just see how God moves and makes that happen. But it's an opportunity. This is because it's, it's video. They, they have a Facebook, so it's live. Plus they play it on a radio station at least twice. And then they keep it on their, their uh, Facebook. And who knows what God's going to do? Who's going to see it? What's going to change? I don't know. It's, it's all in God's hands. It's a God thing. This morning I'm going to talk about what we need to change in this place. This is what the Lord's got me looking at, seeing. I want you to fully understand. And see, there's one thing about it. I had seen on a Facebook post last night. He talked about the, ap the apostles. And the article was about why do apostles do not set up elders. They're all apostles with no elders. I says, well, for one thing, if you go back to Ephesians 4, it doesn't talk about apostles or elders. That's, that's an understanding that they used to have. Plus, if you realize when, you, when they first went through this, even though Jesus tra trained them a lot, they didn't have a full understanding of a lot of the wisdom. They were growing, they were prospering, they were teaching, and they were growing. I mean, back then... How many pastors did they have? Because that's what they worked with, with elders. So there's a lot of revelation knowledge that, you know, goes along with this. But his article was so true. He says, why? He said, why do we take and uh, go with Sorry, there's a distraction that's trying to get me going here. <laughs> but he says, why do apostles today actually set up a work and there's nobody else doing anything and everybody is relying upon them? And you watch it. You'll see it. Apostles set up a church. That's what they're supposed to do according to what I understood for many years. Apostles set up church. That's what they do. That's all they're supposed to do. And, Ed, Deb, would you take this? My phone. And, and look at it. It's <laughs> Sorry. What happened was we, uh, we have taken and uh, we've been informed that Thurman has some things come up and he's not going to be here this week. So they're sending Dave so people know. We're still going to have the meetings. Dave will be here and not Thurman. And that was a, a message from Thurman that just came in. So I, was, I didn't want to take it. But I'm teaching, but I figured Debbie can take care of it. But the, the reality is when Dave came the last time, he had an awesome word. We were blessed with Dave. Dave has a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge. We're believing that there's a reason that Dave's here. Yes. We're believing that, that there's a message that Dave has for the people. All things work together for you. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. Where did you hear that from? <laughs> so easily we forget. <laughs> yeah. I must have heard that on a program somewhere. <laughs> Praise God. But, but we want to let you know what's happening. And that was a message from them, so I thought you'd better check it. I, okay. So anyway, I just want you to know that what's happening is uh, that, you know, that's a change that's coming down. So praise the Lord. But this man was saying that why is it? And, and see, this is one thing I desired a long time ago. I did not want to set up something that I'm going to run. I'm not designed to run because if I go back and I start to look what God showed me in 2002 of what an apostle is, an apostle is somebody who starts something and then develops somebody to take over and run it. The apostle then becomes an oversight to make sure it keeps running correctly or you can say as a manager in a worldly understanding. That's what the apostle is for. So when we come down here, 
I went back to, and everybody understands about the door, about the, the wall or the, the box with a chain and the door. And the Lord showed me that the box was what happened because of a lot of things going on. And then all of a sudden he says, you need to get rid of the box and bring the vision in. Well, I'm bringing the vision back in. Again, the vision, and I'm going to tell you what the vision is. The Lord showed me a long time ago. And that was in Ephesians 4.11. But just before I get to that, God also reminded me during that time period about this vision. He said, I want you to rise up, route 33 children. If anybody was in our home at the time where we were going through that, we had a big phrase, route 33. We're going to be a route 33 people. If you don't know what that is, that's fine. But would somebody uh, bring up or read, or you want to put that up there, uh, Hebrews 33. Hebrews, what is it, 10.33? 11.33. 11.33. And if somebody wants to read that because I don't have it written down, my phone's over there with a, with a word in it. <laughs> That's why I have the phone up here because I need the word I can look at it once in a while. <laughs> I think it's Hebrews 11.33. Yeah. Just start at 33. Say, by faith, these people. Does somebody else want to read that? By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God had promised oh, them. Oh, anybody want that? Yes. Okay, let's go. Yes. Oh, <laughs> just just checking. <laughs> and also they shut the mouths of lions, quenched the flames of fire, and escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. Whew. Only halfway through 33. Or Women 35. received their loved ones back again from death, but others trusted God and were tortured, preferring to die rather than turn from God. And That's not the part we're supposed to talk oh, about. Oh, okay. Forget, forget 35. <laughs> Only half of 35. <laughs> yeah, 35 and a half, right. 33 to 35 and a half is right. So what happens is they re we... Route 33 people or children were people who were so empowered by the Word of God. And if you want to know one that works like that, it's just like I, I love the story that a guy paraphrased one time is Jonathan and his armor bearer. He said the Israelites came in and they were going to fight against the Pal Palestinians the next, next day. They were camped over here, so the Israelites camped over here, and they said, we're going to make strategy so we know how to go fight them. Jonathan's sitting there saying, oh, 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 let's go, let's go, let's go, let's, oh, 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 let's do this, let's do this. So he gets up with his armor bearer, and they go over, and they're sitting on this hill looking up at the Philistines, all these Philistines, two of them. And, and the armor bearer says, hey, Jonathan, what do you think we need to do? What's your plan? What's your plan? I don't know. I'm thinking about this. Oh, I got it. If we stand up and they see us, we won. Makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> we won. Whew. So what happens? They stand up. They see him. Says, come up hither. King James. And then he says, charge. And they went up and they wiped out a thousand the first wash. And all of a sudden, this old Philistine's in there. I know that look of that man. That's the look of God, and God's against us, and we've lost, and they scattered two, wanting to go with God and doing the impossible. Route 33 people. Route 33 people. If you want to know, going in and doing what we're doing today, it's almost impossible. It's been taking a long time to get to this point. 
Think about that. That's what God wants to set up. I'm not setting up just a church. We have concepts in our minds and understandings, and we need to think this way, and we need to think that way. We want this done. We want that done. God's trying to tell me, he says, you have to take and go back to basic training. I says, basic training. I remember basic training. I did not like basic training. We had a little guy called Sergeant Cantu. He was an E7 or E6 sergeant. While he was a, a DI instructor was beyond me. He'd been to Vietnam three times. He'd been captured twice. He'd been in a foxhole, and, and a hand grenade went off, and he was the only one that was alive with some strap metal in him. I mean, this guy was wild. He's a little short guy. He'd call us in at night and sit us down and talk to us, and, and he'd tell us what's going on. P-A P E man, I'll tell you, we get into P-E, he would have, we have a buck sergeant, a young buck sergeant, and he would stand there, and he would do whatever he could to trip you up, and then they'd have the other DIs around there, and they'd kick you and, and tell you to keep on going, you know, do 20. You just messed up, do 20. They're just waiting for you to mess up, and this DI, he wanted to make you mess up. He'd say things just in a way, so if you weren't right on tune listening to what he was saying, oh, I hated that. Whew. Luckily, I got through with a couple things that they didn't catch me at. And the DI, he loved it. He, you know, this buck sergeant, he'd take you out and run you three to five miles in the morning, every morning. And then when you turn around, you walk out, and it's going to be 90 degrees. It was Louisiana. 90 degrees in the afternoon, but it was 30 degrees in the morning, so somebody walks out with a field jacket on because it was cold. And the DI says, if one wears them, they all wear them. We all went back and put our field jackets on, and by the time it hit 80 degrees, people were dropping out from heat exhaustion. I love basic training. It's fun. Wish we could go do it again. Not really. So what we're going through is basic training in the spiritual realm. God is showing us some things. He's trying to get rid of. You know, I never thought much about it till I got to the military. And I'm not much of a, a professional shooter. I shot. I mean, my grandfather used to throw up tin cans when we we're out at the farm working on the farm. I had, had a 22 single shot. Bing! Hit them things. I got pretty good at shooting those cans in the air. I like skeet. You know, and, and uh, target practice, I enjoy that. I didn't like hunting too much. I did that for a little bit, but it just never really fit too good with me. Chris is excellent over there at all that good stuff. So anyway, and we've been blessed to go out with him to the range and see what's happening. So that's a blessing. But the reality is, the eyes hate anybody that knows how to shoot a weapon. They hate them. And I was trying to figure out why do they hate them? They're already trained up. He says, I got to retrain them. They think they know it all. I have to retrain them. And this is what God is saying. Some of the things I'm going to do, I got to retrain you. You've been trained so good by so many people, but that's not what I want. I got to retrain you. This is what we're going through. This is why the fire up here is coming down and going through the feet of people and going up into the heart to retrain us because we're going to line up with God. We're supposed to do this. We're supposed to do that. Well, that's our training because that's what we believe. That's what we know. God might say, no, that's not it. That's why I said we need to pray and ask God, not, our, not my will, but thy will. That's why I've talked about in that vision or the dream he says, the problem with the church today is we're not picking up the cross and carrying it. What does that mean? We don't go to God and say, Lord, I crucify my fleshly desires. What are you wanting? Be more in me. And we need this in this time period like never before. I'm sitting in my office and the Lord starts coming in and starts telling me some things. And I'm thinking, oh, 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 oh. I'm not a D.I., If I was, I'd say, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> more punishment, more change. Let's put these people in shape. You know why they do that? 
because they know if I don't train you up in this time period, when you get on the battlefield, you are not going to make it. When you get on the battlefield, the enemy will take you out because you're not prepared. And that's what God's saying today. I want to train you up and bring you to a preparation. When I seen that about the apostle, I'm thinking, Lord, it's true. So many apostles come in. So many apostles aren't apostles, but they said they are apostles. I found out apostles aren't just supposed to start churches. They see the big picture. That's why they usually end up starting a church. But they don't have to start a church. That's the thing. It's quite unique when you start to see what that gifting has to do. The other thing I'm going to tell you. A gifting does not give you any authority other than gives you the ability to understand what you're supposed to be doing. And if anybody knows who you are, they are not supposed to bow down to you or cause you any grief. They're supposed to say, Lord, thank them for being in that position. And if I need to listen to them and hear what they're going to say, guess what? I'll do that. And if they need to listen to me, then praise the Lord. They better listen to me because you give me something to do. That's why I put that mic in front of this in this aisle, because I guarantee you what, I'm not the only one here. God's ahead, and if he wants to talk to you to talk, and sometimes people talk here, and it hits me. This is not about me. It's not about anything you've ever seen before in your life. It's about God. God really moving in a way he's never done before. Or any, he's, he's done before, but I just haven't really seen it myself. You guys might have. I, I'm just running behind times here. But the vision is this, Ephesians 4.11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministries. We aren't Catholics. Because I used to think the only way you could be a saint was if you were in a Catholic church and they told you that you were a saint, usually a saint is when they've been around for a long time and they die. Anybody else ever hear of any saints prior to that? That's what I always heard. It was a learning process that I had to change. And I'm not coming against Catholics. It's just the, the doctrine that comes forth. It is a division in the body of Christ. I don't want a doctrine. I want the word of God to be true. But you are a saint, and that's why I said that. You are a saint. You are a saint. See, God knew you before you were born, Jeremiah 1.5. He knew you before you were born, and he formed you in the womb. He wanted you. He needed you. He had a plan for you. Did you realize that you were made before the full universe, before the universe was even thought of or brought forth? You were already thought about. You know, God's already wrote books on you. He wanted you. He needed you. He, he, he was planning on getting you here. Think how important that is, how important you are to God and what he wants to do for you. And he says that what he does is he sets up certain people with certain attributes. That's the gifts, attributes, that understand how to take you because they're understanding from the Lord and they're praying and they're asking God because the Bible says train up a child in the way they're supposed to go. Who are you? You are the child of God. And if we don't ask God, how do you want your child to go? We're in trouble. And there's too many people out there in churches that are locking people down, said you can't do this, you can't do that because they don't want you to do this or want, to, want you to do that. That's not what I want. I want you to be blessed in a way that God can move through you and change you and do what you're called to do. He says, for perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Am I supposed to do the work of the ministry? Mm -mm. My ministry is right here to you. I learned that a long time ago. My gifting was an apostle. My calling is the body of Christ. For me to go out and get somebody saved is hard. I can do it. I'm willing to do it. It's not that. I just don't have any drive to do it. I would rather work for somebody who's saved and get them built up so they go do what they're called to do because I know greater things will happen. You know? See what I'm saying? 
guess what? You might take the garbage out every day, but if you don't have a garbage man that picks the garbage up, what's going to happen? Woo, doggies. <laughs> They're going to be a stinky blaze around your house. <laughs> you need that person to do each part of the, the project. You need somebody like your grandson to go on and put the garbage in the garbage pail and pull it out to the street. <laughs> oh, I just got the thumbs down from him. <laughs> you need somebody to do something, see? And then you need somebody else to do something else. And then what do you need? You need somebody out there with a caterpillar to push the dirt over so it doesn't stink too bad out there. There's always an odor around a, a, a dump. But see, there's, there's people in every place, and that's what's happening. You need to train people up. What do you think? If, if we all went to college, we got to college, and we learned all these great things, and then we went and we set on welfare. Woo, doggies. That's what church is doing right now in a lot of cases. We go in there, we learn these things, and we go out and don't do anything. See, we're, we're, we're here, we're trying to work in the power of the Holy Spirit and understand the truth and do our best to perfect you. That's what this is all about. Family fellowship, that's what it's about. Discipleship, that's what it's about. A ministry that we need. We're looking at different things and seeing what God wants to do. See, and, and this is what, it's the hard part. It says, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So, you know, everything that you do is going to affect the body of Christ. That's what we're talking about this afternoon, is the body of Christ. It, and it's going to affect the body of Christ. Think about that. Everything that you do, you're affecting the body of Christ. If you want to know more, you have to come this afternoon and hear what i got to say. Because how it affects the body of Christ. Until we all come in the unity of the faith. I'll tell you what, faith, I, it's amazing. The Bible says if you have faith as a mustard seed, ooh, little, you can do all things. You know how much faith you need? You just have to have true faith. What true faith is, is no doubt. That mustard seed, you know why that's so important? If you put that mustard seed in the ground, what's going to happen? You're going to have growth. It's going to grow because it has life in it. But if you have a little bit of faith, but you have doubt in it, you just killed the life in that faith. You have to have faith. How do you get faith? By hearing the word of God, by believing, by coming in such a way of knowledge of what God is trying to do. And then, boom, all of a sudden, it's going to take off. See, but with the unity of the faith, if you take faith, it says two more are gathered together in his name and ask anything of the Father, what's going to happen? You're all going to be mad at each other. No, it doesn't say that. It says if two or more gather, ask anything. Uh, and, you know, any, two are gather, ask anything. Who is that? Come on, somebody tell me that one. And it will be done for me by my Father. Woo, you know it. Awesome. See? So when you have two and you pray and you don't have it come together, what do you say? Ah, must not have been God's will. I've heard that one. I've done it myself. That's wrong. There's something wrong. It's probably a little bit of doubt in that faith because it didn't produce. The word of God will not return void. So if you're, if you're doing the word of God and it, it comes back, you got a problem. You need to figure out. See, that's the unity, bringing the understanding, bringing the knowledge until we all come into the unity of the faith. Think about that. And the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man and to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ Wow. For we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried around with every wind of doctrine by the slight uh, of men and cunning craftiness whereby we lie, they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ, for whom the whole body fitted together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working of the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body into 
the edification, edifying of itself in love. Now, that's a lot. But if you get the full revelation, when we get set up and going the way the Lord wants us to go, what are we going to do? We're going to be that first army we talked about. We will be the first army we talk about. Because we'll be walking in such unity and such faith. You know, it's amazing what God wants to do through us and for us and by us. Is awesome. And the reason we're resetting is because I did not set up the working of the structure the way it would work to achieve Ephesians 4. I was kind of weak. I was looking, and I'd, I'd be very honest, I was looking for people to come along. And I got people to come along, but then, that you know, with everybody's understandings and ideas and things that I put down and said, well, you need to do this, you need to do that. And, well, some of it was for the future, and because it was for the future, they start doing it, and it kind of caused the little issues and little problems. I take it on my shoulders. I messed up. And the God says, now it's time to restructure and make it right the first time, and when we go, we go. So if you've got ideas and viewpoints, I'll take them. I'll pray about them. I'll, I'll instrument them as, as the Lord shows me and directs me to do so. You know, and that's what we want to do is just make sure that we're following the Holy Spirit. To tell you the truth, when I look at some of the things we've done, not all of them, some of the areas were kind of like the Third Army. Anybody remember what the Third Army was like? A mess. We're not organized. We're not unified. We're not going. We have certain things that's happening. And this is the area that we're going to try to straighten up so we become more like the second army so that we can become the first army. If we become the first army, Des Moines, Iowa will be changed. I don't care who. I don't care what. I don't care what's going on. We will change Des Moines, Iowa. Literally. Why do we want to change Des Moines, Iowa? So people can be blessed. If we can bless others, that's why we're going after with Brother Macklin, unity. If we bring that unity together, God's going to start doing some awesome things in those areas that are out there. And the last thing, because I'm going to cut this a little short today simply because, and everybody says, yay! <laughs> because what happens is, we got that meeting this afternoon. We got to get there, get ready, and go that way. So praise the Lord. I just thank God for everything that he's doing. But the last thing is Matthew 8, 5 through 13. Matthew 8, 5 through 13. If somebody would read that, I'd appreciate that. And you might have King James up here, so you want to read that up there? And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Just keep on going through seven. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shalt come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, Go, and he goeth. And to another, Come, and he cometh. And to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled, and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self self-same hour.
Okay, there you go. This is what the Lord said. Authority. I had prayed one time and I said, and I've said it before, but it's just good to remember. I said, Lord, why don't people want to work together in the body of Christ? Because I've seen that. You go to church to church, there's a lot of reasons, but one thing that he said, he said because the United States was founded on independence. On independence. So what happens is, with independence, what's going on is that we have an issue if we are independent, how do we become working together in unity? How do we work together in if you're independent? I can do what I want. I can go where I want. I can have things happen the way I want. That's just the way it is, right? You're independent. But all things through we have is authority. One of the things the Lord has spoke to me about many years ago, and I've, I've understood it for a long time, is about authority. And I watch people, they don't understand authority. A lot of times people want to be in authority. A lot of times people do not understand authority. One of the things the Lord has put in me because of the reason I'm at where I'm at is because of authority. Most people want to do what they want to do. They want to do how they want to do it. They want to do it the way they know how to do it. They don't care. They don't even ask God for his understanding to get his authority to do what they're doing. We've been trained. We've been taught. We've been put through. So now all of a sudden, we just bypass God and do our own things. And God says, this revival is going to be powerful. He says, it's the most releasing of the power of the Holy Spirit has ever been. A most anointing. Why? Because when we line up with what God wants, and we go there, and we say, Lord, I crucify the flesh daily. Daily, you go before the Lord and crucify your fleshly desires. You know, I might not be as heavy as I am today. I'm just telling you the truth. <laughs> I might not be. Why? Because if I crucified my flesh and I, I wasn't eating as much as I did way back when while I was driving. The driving was a problem. But the fact is, by doing that, you know, I maybe did something different. The same thing in the spirit. We might be doing something differently if we're willing to go before the Lord and ask him about us and what we need to do. And then at that point, then take and say, okay, Lord, we thank you, we, we bless you, and we give you glory, and we will do it even though it might not be easy. But all things are good for those who love God. And if you want to love God more, you will go and you will crucify your flesh. You will ask the Lord, remove it from me. You will come into that place. Because I'm going to tell you, the Bible says in Second Chronicles 7.14, if you humble yourself and pray, seek my face and turn from your evil ways, I will heal your land. What's going to happen? Your land. Everything that you have is going to start to change and get better. Everything you have will get better. And when I look back there at the humble at first, I said, because I wanted to understand, it says, submit yourself under another. You know, when you start to submit yourself under the will of the Father, you're turning away from your own sinful things. You're starting to come down here and you're saying, Lord, not thy will, but my will. Or not my will, but thy will. I'll change that around. And all of a sudden, guess what happens? The devil just lost a handhold on some of the things that's happened in your life. He doesn't have a legal right because we all have legal rights. That's what authority is, a legal right. You have a legal right not to be obedient. You have a legal right not to humble. You have a legal right to do whatever you want, to be independent and go your own way and just enjoy yourself. It doesn't matter. Or you have 
a legal right to understand what the Word of God is and start to believe the Word of God, start to ask God, start to seek God, start to find out what God is all about. That's why he had me set this place up. Because he knows that I'm under his authority. He knows that I will follow him. I will do what he wants to do. And he knows that I will give other people the ability to do that. So this is very important. And I'm going with Luke 7, 8. That's also King James. It says, For I also am a man under authority, having under me soldiers, and I say unto one, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh, and no servant, and to my servants. Do this, and he does it. And they were saying to his servants, Do this, and he does it. Guess what? In basic training, guess what? You are definitely going to do what you got to do or they will make you do more than what you're supposed to do so you learn that if you do what you're going to do you don't have to do the rest of the stuff and you don't want to do the rest of the stuff so then you just do it and you learn a principle when he tells you you go it blew me away the first time i was walking we we're walking down the road we were still in basic training, but they gave us a little time to go down the PX. So we're walking down the road, and all of a sudden, this guy jumps out of the car, comes up. He's a, I don't know if he was a major or something. He was up there a ways in rank. And he comes up. Of course, we salute to him because we see who he is. And he says, you're in trouble. I says, what do you mean? You didn't salute my car. I didn't even know I was supposed to salute his car. See that tag there? That's a uh, officer's car and when you walk by it the respect that you have to have the authority is there and you need to salute that car I don't care if I'm in it if it's in a parking spot you salute that car that's authority man that's bad that's hard you stupid car I don't have to worry about you but that, that's the authority of that man that drives that car did you know in the kingdom of God, when you get in your car, you got a royal coach because you're royal? Do you realize when you put your clothes on, you got a royal shirt because you're royalty? Whew, if you understand the kingdom of God, it's awesome. You got royal shoes. I don't care if your car is the worst looking car in the world. It's royalty. You know what? That devil respects your car. He might try to tear your car up. He might try to tear it down. He might try to destroy it. But that, you know. He's got to respect it if you make him respect it. You know, devil, this is my car. This is royalty. And you've got to respect it. When we get in that understanding, when you start to walk in the army and you start to see these things that seem so weird in, the, in, in our normal lives, that's why you walk in a place and you say, Lord, I bind up every evil spirit and I, and I release the angels that anything that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. You can do that on your cars today. You know, you go in a parking lot, and you leave your car, and you're saying, oh, I wonder if it's going to happen. I used to do that at, mobile home, or at uh, motels. I was always concerned about my cars at the mo motels, you know. We even had a, a guy who got his car stolen at a motel underneath a security light with a security camera. That puts fear in you. So what you do is you start to realize, hey, I got authority over these spirits. I put the hedge of protection around it. I blind the eyes of those that come to kill, steal, and destroy. Bible says that I can do it. And guess what? Praise the Lord. He's protecting everything. And then I can go have peace. If it comes up in my mind, I say, Lord, your angels are in charge. I don't have to worry about it. Glory to God. See, we got that authority. We got that power. That is our authority we might not quite understand, but we need to bring it together. And as we go through this reset, there's going to be things you're going to say, oh, man, that's stupid. That's no good. I'm just being honest with you. I don't like this. I don't like that. You need to listen to God. It's, and if I'm off, then come tell me. I'm off. Tell me this is wrong, and I'll go before the Lord and find out where I'm off. Because in 2 Timothy 2, 3, endure suffering along with me as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. For as Christ's soldiers, do not let yourself become tied up 
in the affairs of this life for when you cannot satisfy for when you cannot satisfy the one who has enlisted you in this army for then I should say you cannot satisfy it. if you get caught up in the affairs of this life you're not satisfying God if you get caught up in the cares of this life you're not satisfying God see this is that's what it says Follow the Lord's rule for doing his work. Just as an athlete either follows the rule or is disqualified and wins no prize. That's simple. Hardworking farmers are the first to enjoy the fruit of their labors. That's right. I don't know why the chicken little came in my mind. The sky is falling. It's gonna, that was not what I'm thinking of. <laughs> What was the story where they always went out and they, they said, would you please help me, you know, grow my garden? Would you help me do this? Would you help me do this? And they said, no, I'm too busy. No, I'm too busy. I, no, I'm too busy. And they finally came back and he says, well, I got all this fruit. Well, I'll take some. Nope. <laughs> that was the anthem, the grasshopper. Okay, that the anthem, okay, anthem the grasshopper. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, where'd that come from? I don't know. I just <laughs> one of those things. But it says just as the athlete either follows the rules, which is authority, like saluting the car, which is stupid to me, but I had to do it. I guarantee you what. Every time I looked when I was walking down the street, I wasn't just walking down. I was looking for the car. I was looking for the sticker. I didn't want to get in trouble. Wow. You know, it's pretty bad when you have to put out stuff when you don't want to. And you can't even easily just walk down the road without having to look for a sticker on the car. But that was life. It says, suffer along with me as a good soldier at the beginning of Jesus Christ. He says, just as an athlete either follows the rule or is disqualified and wins no prize. Hard-working farmers are the first to enjoy the fruit of their labor. That's where that chicken little came in. I don't know why that came in. Think about what I am saying. The Lord will give you understanding in all these things. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory. We thank you. We bless you. We just ask, Lord, that you move mightily upon each and every person. I pray that through this time of reset and as we start to perform and get this thing in the place where you want it, what I even call basic training, that people will see the truth, understand, and start to accept what's going on. And by doing that, great things are going to come from here. The fire of the Holy Spirit. It's just like what I'm hearing and, and you're showing me. In the past, revivals, the fire came down upon a group of people, and usually in a group area. And people would always come to the fire, and immediately they would take and great things were happening. People got so busy they never even really perfected their own lives. They just did what they needed to do because it, it worked. No matter what you did, it worked. But this time, the Lord says, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to pour out into your heart and revive your heart. So when you and others that are revived come together, that same anointing is there. But when you walk out, it's not there anymore. Wherever you go, it will be. The power of God will move through you, be upon you, and do great things in you. And we praise your holy name for everything that you're doing, Father. We give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for this afternoon. We thank you for everybody here and those who can make it this afternoon. We ask that you bless us until we meet again. Keep us safe in the name of Jesus. Amen.